Welcome to another Hardy Diagnostics tutorial. In this video, we will be explaining the importance of the proper operation and maintenance of your laboratory's microbiology incubator. Incubators are a critical piece of laboratory equipment and help the lab run smoothly and safely. Incubators ensure viability of cultures, provide confidence in microbial reactions, and yield essential information about the microbes around and within us. They help diagnose disease, maintain a safe food supply, ensure the security of our medicines, and relay important information about our environment. As a provider of microbiology products, Hardy Diagnostics understands the importance of proper incubator maintenance. Incubators can operate across a large range of temperatures depending on their intended use, but certain temperature ranges are required for certain types of microorganisms. In general, bacteria are incubated within a temperature range of 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. Campylobacter can be cultured at 42 degrees Celsius as a selective growth measure. Fungal cultures typically grow best at ambient room temperatures of 20 to 25 degrees Celsius and can take up to seven days to grow. Maintaining the temperature of the incubator by maintaining a temperature log is essential for successful incubation. Liquid in-glass thermometers or digital spot check thermometers work best for incubator use due to their high accuracy and precision. In addition to temperature, it is important to maintain the humidity of the incubator to ensure the environment is optimal for microbial growth and to prevent culture plates from drying out too quickly. A relative humidity level of 90 to 95 percent is ideal for aerobic incubators. Maintaining a water pan or beaker for humidity is absolutely necessary to prevent the drying out of the culture media. Low humidity will dehydrate the media, resulting in slow growth or death of the cells. Humidity reservoirs should be changed at least once per week. The water in the humidity pan or beaker should contain a quaternary ammonium disinfectant. Do not use tap water, since the chlorine could corrode and damage the surfaces. Never use any substance that create toxic fumes or volatile compounds. Beware, volatile gases could inhibit the growth of your cultures. A quaternary ammonium disinfectant is a good choice because it is broadly effective against a range of microorganisms and is also non-volatile and non-toxic to growing cultures. If using a quaternary ammonium compound disinfectant, ensure the concentration of quaternary ammonium is 10% or less. Incubators should be cleaned monthly with a mild soap solution to prevent microbial contamination. Use a soft cloth to wipe down surfaces. To clean and disinfect the interior of the incubator, use a 2% solution of quaternary ammonium compound or use 70% alcohol. Never use bleach or any chlorine containing solution, since that will corrode the stainless steel or copper interior. Clean the interior once or twice per month. Again, be aware, the fumes from cleaning solutions used could inhibit your cultures after cleaning. Consult the manufacturer when in doubt regarding decontamination or cleaning agents and equipment or material compatibility. Some incubators include HEPA filters, which trap fine particulate matter present in the incoming air to reduce the potential for chamber contamination. Filters should be replaced every six months to one year. Capnophilic or CO2 loving organisms, such as Haemophilus influenza, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, or Neisseria gonorrhea, require higher levels of carbon dioxide than that found in ambient air. In these cases, incubate cultures in an elevated CO2 environment using a CO2 incubator. The CO2 concentration in a microbial CO2 incubator is typically 5%. To hook up the CO2 incubator to a CO2 source, attach the CO2 regulator to a medical grade CO2 cylinder. Medical grade CO2 should be used since using non-medical grade CO2 risks introducing contaminants into the chamber and may damage the incubator. Alternatively, the building supply source may be used in place of a cylinder. Set the wall source control or cylinder regulator to 15 to 20 pounds per square inch, 
do not exceed 25 psi. Connect the gas tubing to the incubator and regulator or wall source. The flow of CO2 can now be initiated by opening the CO2 supply control or gas regulator. For safety purposes, CO2 tanks must be secured to a wall in an upright position with heavy chains. When cylinders are not in use, keep both the valves and caps tightly closed. A reference sensor device can be used to verify the CO2 concentration in the incubator. For best CO2 accuracy, use a calibrated digital gas analyzer with sample tubing that can be connected to the incubator's external CO2 sample port. Because a normal room contains anywhere from 100 to 1,000 microorganisms per cubic meter, it is vitally important that the area surrounding the incubator be kept clean. Never store items on top of the incubator, since they can collect dust and prevent you from cleaning the top surface. This could cause contaminants to enter your incubator every time you open the door. Make sure that the room air vents are not blowing towards the incubator, which could increase the chance of contaminating your cultures. Redirect the vents away from the incubator door. As for the integrity of your incubator door and chamber, be sure to check the door gasket at least monthly for cracks or deterioration. Thank you for watching our tutorial on incubators. You can find dozens of other free laboratory tutorials on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new tutorials as they are released. Hardy Diagnostics is your complete microbiology supplier and has been offering laboratorians a culture of service for over 40 years. To learn more about Hardy Diagnostics and the products we offer, visit us at hardydiagnostics.com.